Myers, Northtown Neighbor News Magazine at the Tufshin Iron Base 5772 2012 Greater Chicago Jewish Fest, the largest gathering of Jewish people in the Chicago land area that happens every other year. And if we want to thank my entire tech crew, Sonny Hirsch, who's being aided this time by his daughter, Jamie, because we need to be honest about this. Otherwise, we might get, might get flagged by our next guest, who is Gary Kenzer, who actually runs an international organization out of Skokie called Honest Reporting. How are you, Gary? Are. How are you? Good to see you again. Thank God. I'm doing good, and it's good. good to see you. I guess it's been four years. It's been four years. We took a, 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 a cycle off, and no. it's nice to be back here on the 16th cycle for this event. I oh, learned very that nice. this morning when we were setting up. So it's, it's a real remarkable thing for here in Chicago to do this. No, it's absolutely great. You know what, I, I was actually a vendor at the second one and I've gone to, except when I had a wedding, I've been to every one except that since. Wow, wow, <laughs> amazing. So, you know, we, we did this in 2006 and I have to say there's, there's never a dull moment. There's always stories and, and bias and photo bias to, to cover. And, you know, now that the, the Internet is so prevalent and Facebook is so big and, you know, uh, we're, we're very viral these days on our information. More people get their information these days actually on Facebook than they do on uh, the written paper. And unfortunately, more people get their news from things like the Comedy Channel. Yeah. Uh, it's just... and, and, and I hate to say it, too, but a lot of the regular news shows on commercial TV aren't that much better than the Comedy Channel. Not at all. They're awful. Just awful. So... You know, one of the things that we've been talking to people here about is the importance of being connected through social media. Because whether we like it or not, this is not the future. This is the today. Yeah. So, it's you know, what is. It, it is exactly what is. You know, people have said, oh, we used to love it when you used to fax us your stories. And I, I had to actually go, fax, wow. <laughs> I used to have one of those, too. I, used I don't, to. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we could fax out nearly 900,000 messages and make them current and relevant. I actually threw, without a single mailing or without any face-to-face -face meetings for Jewish Chicago for my, for my primary issue, mm -hmm. um, it was through Facebook and through um, email. Strictly email and Facebook. I took in 70% of my advertising for the biggest yeah. issue I ever had two months before the issue. This is, this is the case, you know. We were looking at, because we do a whole session now on social media and how to advocate for Israel through social media, yeah. and it's, it's, it's very telling when Facebook was going public. They had to disclose some of their public, their facts. Yeah. If Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest country on the globe. Yeah, it's like, what, 900, 800 million? Nine? It's now 910 million. Wow. Third largest country on the globe. So whether we like it or not, we have to be smart about how we use Facebook, mm. but it can be our best friend when it comes to advocating. And, you know, I was in Detroit at their, their, their Yom Hatzmahut celebration a, a while back, and a wonderful elderly gentleman came to me and said, I'm not going to do any of this because at the end of the time, People will know that Israel's the right country and everybody else is wrong. And I felt terrible because I wanted to say something because the answer is that it's who gets the image through and how powerful that image is is going to stick with people. And by the way, how many people might be killed or, or, or worse in the meantime? Uh, it's just, it's, it was very troubling. Yeah. So, so the answer is if we sit back and do nothing, it's not a good thing. Right. So we have to do something proactively, whether it's writing letters to the editor, whether it's blogging a response to a, an article that you read on the internet, whether it's retweeting or it's putting Facebook and connecting with whatever organization of your choice, hopefully us, <laughs> you, you've got to forward these messages. You know, when the Helen Thomas issue came about, yeah. we know Helen, okay, yes, very, see. very well. It didn't take a day before we had nearly a quarter of a million posts out on Facebook. Wow. Okay, now let's be honest, you know, that, that was all attributed to Facebook. Yeah. Okay, because you can follow the forwards. You can't follow the forwards of the forwards, but, and we tracked it, and it was huge. Or the case where the most recent was where there was a uh, UN uh, UNRWA person yeah. who had carried, uh, showed a picture of a father, a Palestinian father, who carried into a hospital her de his dead child. 
Okay, so now you gotta feel terrible when you see a dead child. Sure. Okay, and it's very carefully chosen. Yeah. The picture of a dead child. And it, the caption was, another Palestinian murdered by an Israeli. Yeah. So we looked at the picture, did a little due diligence in about a half an hour, and figured, first of all, the picture was taken in 2006. Wow. Big difference between 2006 and 2012. But get ready. Yeah. The big story here was, yeah. it wasn't an Israeli killed the kid. She was actually run over by a Palestinian driver in 2006. Which unfortunately is more likely to happen than the other of way around. Of course it is, but you know, when that picture got out, it was huge. So we started a petition to the UN and it got 72,000 signatures. Wow. So, and that all happened in two days. By the way, I signed it. Uh, so you remember. <laughs> I'm on your mailing list. <laughs> so it's very important that you do something. To do nothing is a decision and it's not a good decision because the other side is well organized and we better get our act together. No, and you know what? They're very united in what they're doing and it is extraordinarily dangerous. Uh, Rex Hupke wrote an article that uh, not enough people have read um, and uh, he's a columnist in the Tribune and it went all over the country but it's an actual newspaper article because that's what I read from my news and it's actually called The Death of Facts. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, we need guys like with names like Honest Reporting. But, but see, that's really an honest name in this case. You'd be surprised how many Arabs would put out a name like that, and of course. you wouldn't be close. <laughs> Listen, we, we just want, whether it's good news or bad news, yeah. we want to get the other side of the story out. Okay, we want yeah. the other side of the story, and we want the images to be done right the first time. It's one of the reasons why, after the second Lebanon war, we created a media facility in Jerusalem to partner with the media, because Israel hasn't been doing that. No, as a fact, you know what, for all the brains we have in so many fields in Israel, they get a zero minus on public relations. Absolutely. So we created, through a number of federations around the country, yeah. this media facility where literally journalists come to our facility to get partner information, to get help, to get translation services, to get guidance, to get uh, driving assistance, to go to a particular area. One of the most impressive trips we took them on with the yeah. journalists was we took them to Shderot. Because yeah. they all read and wrote about the Qassam rockets. And, you know, it doesn't take too much to be on a day when there's going to be a Qassam rocket in Shdera. I'm not happy about that. Yeah. And they all ran like, like mice. Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? And when they debriefed about it back at our media facility in Jerusalem, yeah. they realized you only have 15, 20 seconds to make a decision. Yeah, 15, 20 seconds. What would you do with 15 seconds in your life? If you ask the average person out there, what do you do in 15 seconds? What do people say? Maybe put both shoes on if they're lucky or put a stick of gum in their mouth. But that's the time that an Israeli has to figure out where they're going to be. You know what? Wow. I'm really a slow runner. <laughs> so, <laughs> you and me trouble. both, my friend. So this is, this is the amount of time, the average amount of time that an Israeli has to... Uh, to, to make uh, plans for their life. So that's why it's important for people to be smart about this subject. And that's why we're here, not only to talk to people about it, but to get people and to do events in congregations and communities all over the country. Listen, i got to have you into my studio sometimes. I'm in West Rogers Park. We're Come not on. that far away. Let's do it. So absolutely, because you know what? Interviewing you every four or six years, that's not good enough. <laughs> so Gary Kenzer, honest thank reporting, you. I want to thank you. And thank you for the job you're doing. It's so important. You thank have no you. idea. We do it together. Okay, Thanks. great. Take be care. well. You too.